Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mr. Lee with Lesson 22. Lesson 22 is found in Section 10.3 of your textbook if you want to reference the textbook. Today we're going to learn two theorems and there's two examples. There's one example for each of those, so two theorems and two examples. Okay. So the first theorem is Theorem 10.7. So let me read through it first and then I'll explain it. And as you're watching these notes and taking notes, I encourage you to, anything that I write down in the notes, um, I encourage you to write down as well um, to have that. Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay, so theorem 10.7, perpendicular chord bisector theorem. If a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. Okay, So here we have a circle. Okay? We have the circle, it's an unnamed circle. And I don't really like that too much, too, too much. So let's go ahead and draw our own example. We're going to draw an example, you know, just similar to this. Okay, So let's start off with a circle, make it nice and big and just kind of freehand it to the best of your ability. And let's call this circle A. Okay, so capital A. So that is the center point. Now there's going to be two chords in this circle. Okay, so the first chord, I'm going to draw it to make it different. Uh, let's draw it in blue. So, and remember that a chord is basically a line segment whose endpoints are on the circle. Okay, so it kind of looks like this this uh, line segment it intersects the circle at two points, and those two points are the endpoints of the circle of the segment. Excuse me. So let's call this point point E. Let's call this point point G. So this is a chord. Segment EG is a chord. Okay. Now, segment EG is a special chord. Right? And it's special because it also intersects point A, the center of the circle. So a chord that intercepts, intersects the center is the diameter. Okay? So we know that segment EG is a diameter. Okay? So we're given that by this diagram. Now we have this other chord that's uh, in a different part of the circle right here. Let's label it segment FD. Okay, and you notice that the blue segment, the diameter, segment EG, it intersects segment FD. Okay, so what this theorem tells us is that anytime you have a diameter, okay, and it intersects another chord, okay, we know. If this is, if we know that this here is perpendicular, okay, there's two things that we know, okay? The two things that we can conclude is that this little piece is congruent to this piece. So let's call this point H right here, this point, point of intersection. So we know, okay, that segment FH is going to be congruent to segment HD. So this piece is congruent to that piece. Okay. As long as this is a diameter and this is perpendicular, if we have those two given things, then we know that these two pieces are congruent. So this cuts this segment in half. It's a perpendicular bisector. It bisects it. It cuts it in half. The other thing that we are get that we can conclude is that this piece is congruent to this piece. This piece here is congruent to this piece here. So this piece here is it goes from F to G, and it's not a segment. It's curved. It's rounded. It's part of the circle. So that is an arc. Arc FG is congruent to arc GD. Okay, so those are the two things that we can conclude. 
All right, so how do we use this? How do we apply this theorem in problem solving? So here's an example right here. Okay, and this is a two-part example. We have this diagram. Okay, we have this diagram right here. So let's just pick this diagram apart piece by piece. Okay, so we have a circle. Okay, we have a circle. Where is the center of the circle? Point M. So we have circle M. Okay, then what else is going on? Well, there's this chord right here, this line segment, segment JL. We know that that's a chord because its endpoints are on the circle, and it's special because it also intersects the center of the circle. So we know that segment JL is a diameter. Let's go ahead and just write that. So we're given that segment JL as a diameter of circle M. We also have this chord here, segment HK. And we can see we're given that this is perpendicular. So we're given that JL, segment JL, is perpendicular to segment HK. And they intersect at point N. Okay? So the first thing we're asked to do is to find HK, the length from H to K. Okay. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have this 7 right here. What is that 7 referring to? What is that measuring? 7 is the length from N to K. That's this piece right here. Okay. But what did we learn in the theorem? We learned that anytime we have this kind of diagram where we have a diameter that's a perpendicular bisector of a chord inside the same circle, we know that these two pieces are congruent, right? Because this diameter bisects or cuts this chord in half. So if nk is equal to 7 units, well, hn must also be 7 units, right? And so how long is hk? Well, hk, segment addition theorem, tells us that hk is equal to the length of h to m plus m to k. So we know that hk is equal to 7 plus 7, which equals 14. And what must we always put when we're finding the, the measure of something or the length of something? Units. And we don't know what the units are, so we're just going to write the word units. Okay. Now we're asked to find the measure and that means how long, okay, how long the measure, or excuse me, the measure of, not the length, but the measure of arc HK, okay? So the measure of the arc is how many degrees, right? So let's take a look at the picture. Well, again, the theorem tells us that this diameter, it's a perpendicular bisector to this chord, so it cuts it in half. It also cuts this in half so that this piece here is congruent to that piece there. Okay. So we know that 11x is going to equal 70 plus x. Okay. So now all we have to do is isolate x. So we're going to subtract x from both sides of this equation, leaving us 10x equals 70. Then we're going to divide by 10, okay, and we get x is equal to 7. And in this case, I know over here we had units, we put 14 units, but in this case, x is not by itself, it's not the length of anything. It's just an unknown that is part of um, this measure, right? And it also says degrees up here and degrees up here, so x, we do not need units for that. Okay, but are we done? No, we're not. I boxed it as if we're done, but I made a mistake because, look, we didn't answer the question. The question asked, well, what is the measure of the arc from H to K, this entire arc? Okay, well, to find that, we have to plug X in. Okay, so if you plug X in here, we know that the measure 
of HJ is going to equal 11 times 7 or 77 degrees. Okay, and we also know that the measure of arc JK is equal to 70 plus 7 or 77 degrees. So now we can simply say that the measure of arc HK is going to be 77 plus 77, which is going to be 154. And now we're going to put in our units, because units of measures of arcs is in degrees. So now we're going to box our final answer. Okay, in the next video, I'll cover the next theorem and the next example.